ABC News exclusive. You're going to meet a young woman with an extraordinary story of survival. She was the victim of a crime that shocked parents everywhere. Stabbed 19 times, allegedly by two of her friends, who said they were trying to impress a fictional internet character called Slender Man. Now, for the first time, the girl and her parents are going on camera, and ABC's David Muir, anchor of World News Tonight, has our report. She appears to be stabbed. She appears to be what? Stabbed. Stabbed? Correct. Waukesha, Wisconsin, just outside Milwaukee. And on a Saturday morning this past May, a horrific tale is just beginning to emerge. Is there any bleeding going on? Her clothing has got blood on it. Okay, and you found her and she was just laying there? Yeah. A birthday sleepover with three 12-year-olds the night before. And now two girls are missing. The other, Peyton Leitner, has somehow crawled out of the woods, covered in stab wounds. 19 of them. She's now being wheeled into the operating room, having just told her mother her friends did this to her. They had run away, and, and the police hadn't found them yet. And we just knew that Peyton told us Morgan stabbed her, and the police hadn't been able to find the girls. And in fact, police believe those girls were walking. Yeah. They were going to find a mansion in the woods. Oh, the mansion, yeah, the mansion in the woods. They were going to the Nicolay Forest because they believed that there was a mansion there that Slenderman lived in. Incredibly, police say those girls were now headed to find a mansion where they believed a fictitious internet character truly lived. A character named Slenderman, who police say they were hoping to impress. Outside that hospital, in that town, a major search by ground. These and are the woods air. where the stabbing police action. are still on the scene the here. The frantic tonight. search for the two missing, Morgan Geyser and Anissa Wire. Two 12-year-old girls stabbing their friend nearly to death is unimaginable any time, but especially for a safe community like the city of Waukesha. While back at the hospital, the surgeon, John Kellerman, is about to discover just to how much lost. damage has been done. The knife came directly down at this point where this large branch was coming off of this major artery and cut through the tissue overlying it so that the vessels were totally exposed by this injury. The knife cut through the tissue, but not the artery itself. Exactly. The knife stopped at the wall of the artery. And had it not? Had it not, she would have uh, had a major heart attack from the amount of bleeding and probably died within a minute or two. That close to death, nearly five hours after Peyton crawled out of those woods, the two other girls are found. They were right here along Interstate 94, heading out of Waukesha. A knife with a five-inch blade found in one of the girls' bags. Police Chief Russell Jack takes us back to the spot. Both suspects had blood on their clothes. The knife from the stabbing was located in the backpack that was in the possession of the two suspects. Police say they were carrying clothes, granola bars, water bottles. One of the girls carrying a picture of her mother and father and siblings. She wanted to remember what they looked like after leaving her town for that imaginary mansion in the woods. Neither girl puts up a fight. Taken into custody, they would soon be questioned. Two parents were about to ask their daughter what happened too. At first, Peyton couldn't talk, writing to communicate. Do you remember the first message she wrote? I want to go home. I want to go home. When can I go home? And has Peyton talked at all about the horror of that moment? She told me she was scared. But the first time I asked her what she remembered about what happened, she said, all I remember is the pain. How well did you know these, these two other girls? It was uh, Peyton's best friend. There was no question in your mind that they were best friends. They were, oh, they were best friends. They were best friends, friends since about fourth grade. Fourth grade is when we met Morgan for the first time. They say Peyton would talk to Morgan every night on the phone. Were there ever any red flags? They would have little arguments, but every 12-year-old girl has little arguments. Across town at the Waukesha Police Department, the two other friends at that sleepover now answering questions of their own. Ellen Gabler is a reporter at the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. She has followed this case closely. The thing that was the most surprising and shocking to me was how planned out this whole thing was. A plot they tell police that was in the works for months. You can't believe this is actually 12 year olds, especially 12 year old girls. They tell police they committed this crime in part out of their devotion to a character they discovered on the internet, Slender Man. A tall, faceless, mysterious figure, a fictional character who lurks in the background, sometimes peering over the shoulders of children. 
the story of Slenderman changing, evolving all the time, with help from fans all over the world, adding to the story online, giving this fictional character new life every day. He is uh, uh, the thing that we fear that we don't actually encounter, right? So we check, our, we check under our beds for the Slenderman, but he's, you know, not actually there. Not there because he doesn't exist. But listen to what these two girls begin to tell police. Anissa Wire revealing to investigators it was Morgan's idea to kill Peyton, to prove themselves, quote, worthy to Slender Man. Anissa telling police her friend suggested, quote, we should be proxies for Slender. The girls were very clear with police that they were trying to kill the victim. They wanted to do it as, as a sacrifice to Slender Man. And in excruciating detail, they described multiple plots, all beginning with that Friday night sleepover. They had originally planned to kill their friend that night in Morgan's house. But for some reason, at that moment, the girls changed their minds. They brought her here to the park on Saturday morning to kill her in this bathroom. Their big concern was finding a drain for the blood to go down. But once inside that park bathroom, something happens between the girls now hatching their second plot. There was a back and forth between Morgan and Anissa about who was going to stab the girl. Um, both of them chickened out, essentially, and said that they told police they couldn't do it. But there would be one more plan. The girls leave that bathroom and walk down a nearby road to the woods. Peyton's parents take me there, revealing to me what their little girl told them. And they got to the park and they told her they wanted to play hide and seek in the woods. And she told me she didn't want to go. She sensed it. Yeah, she did say she was forced to go. In fact, the girls tell police about that game of hide and seek. Anissa and the victim were hiding. Anissa told her to lay down in the dirt and, and she didn't want to. Anissa tells police she sits on Peyton and that Peyton says to her, I can't breathe. Anissa tells investigators she was thinking, if I sat on her, Morgan could then stab her. At that point, one girl says to the other, just go crazy. Yeah, yeah. A short time later, Anissa tells police Morgan takes the knife, turns to her friend and says, I'm not going to until you tell me to. Anissa says she then told Morgan to, quote, go ballistic, go crazy. Peyton is stabbed 19 times, stumbling, trying to get up. Where on earth do you think she got the strength to crawl out of those woods? When we asked her, and she said, I wanted to live. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. And tonight, for the first time, Peyton. Hey, in the one place that now makes her smile the most, the animal shelter not far from her home. This is a good place to come. The kittens needing a home. She shows me her favorites, and there are too many to count. How about all three of them? Her parents wanted me to see her smile again. And she has the most beautiful smile. Did that disappear? Yeah. For a little while. We see peaks of it every once in a while. Do you feel like your daughter's been stolen from you? For the time being. We'll get her back. Yep. The smiles we then saw looking at her notebooks, the ones with the kittens on the front. Right. Observations from the ground. Some people would say she's doing remarkably well, given what's happened to her. I would say that um, way beyond expectations. I'm astonished at the way that she's been able to recover. And tonight, we are happy to show you the pictures. Her walk down the driveway to the car. Mom driving her back to school. She's an amazing child. She's meant to do something special. She's here for a reason. And we have an update on the two young suspects tonight. Morgan has been found not competent to stand trial, and she's been committed for treatment. And Anissa will be examined by a doctor to determine whether she is fit to stand trial. And our thanks to David Muir for that extraordinary reporting.